Your stop has arrived. Welcome to another Chilla's art game, a longer, more detailed entry this time, The Ghost Train. Kensuke Tanaka is an average office worker. He's a 42-year-old insurance company sales manager and is on his way home from work. Kensuke is taking the subway train to get home like he usually does on any other night. The train still hasn't arrived yet though, so he passes the time by heading to the restroom and then smoking. It's a pretty general station, nothing too out of the norm. A jaunty but calm tune plays over the loudspeakers throughout as he smokes. The train arrives once he finishes. It's scratched up and a dark shade of green. Kensuke steps on board and on the inside are poorly lit aisles of long stretches of benches. It looks like it's been up and running for many years. The seats look weathered down and haven't been switched out in quite some time. The entire thing is near completely empty. In his usual car, he sits in is a woman. Apparently, she works as late as he does, but he decides not to chat with her since they're both tired. He takes his seat and awaits his stop. After some time passes, he notices the train is going right past his stop. And that's weird, he's taken the subway multiple times before. Maybe they just messed up. He gets out of his seat to check if everything's alright. Walking down the aisles, he makes his way to the back where the conductor car is but a large man with a plastic box of cicadas blocks the way. The man seems strange and barely mumbles words saying three escaped. It seems Kensuke will have to get the cicadas back to him around the train if he wants the man to move. It's an easy enough task as they're just littered about anywhere. The man promptly moves to the side once he has his friends back in his possession. Kensuke makes his way into the last train car and talks to the conductor. The conductor states that it must have been a mishap that his stop was missed and he will compensate him for the taxi home. Kensuke sighs in relief that it wasn't on purpose and adds in a comment before the next day comes. He says, what am I going to do with my life? The scene cuts to black. On the next night, Kensuke is taking the subway home again. He repeats his mundane tasks to waste time. He goes to the restroom, buys a drink, and then proceeds to smoke. Nothing new to his daily routine. Well, actually, this time, a light is flickering across the rails of the subway on the other side from where he usually smokes. It must be a broken bulb or something like that. The train screeches into view once again, and Kensuke steps aboard. This time, before taking his seat, he decides to talk to the woman because they missed their stop together, and he thought it might have brought them closer than being just strangers. He does see her every night on the same way home, anyway. Kensuke strikes up a conversation and learns that this woman is actually troubled. He presses a bit to help out, but she screams NO at him. It seemingly came out of nowhere, but she calms down and apologizes. She continues that she doesn't want to talk about it, and Kensuke doesn't really know what to add besides that he'll always be around and decides to walk past her and take his seat. Hopefully she'll talk to him later. He dozes off a second after the talk. He opens his eyes to a small child staring at him blankly. Right in the dim light of the train, a small girl is on board. Kensuke is startled and contemplates what she is doing here. She calls him daddy. He responds, he's not her father. The girl appears to have lost her dad somewhere, and it's a hassle, but she needs help. She's scared, and he can't leave her alone. They walk through the cars together to try to find her dad. There's a couple more people aboard the train tonight. Most look like salary men, and they look pretty similar to one another. Kensuke asks the little girl what her dad looks like, but she says she forgot. Her remark sounds impossible. She truly thought he was her dad. Asking around more to each of the suited strangers leaves nothing. Her dad isn't on this train. How did a child get onto this creaky ancient train all alone? When he realizes this, he looks back and the little girl is running away from him with a little red pinwheel in her hand. Kensuke takes after her in confusion. He follows her down every aisle and passes by every person he has talked to tonight. She disappears in the distance, being far faster than him. He reaches the end, but she's gone. Cicadas chirp loudly over the sound of the rails. Behind him, a gong plays and she is standing there. Just standing there. Before he has time to react, she runs again toward the other direction. He chases after her more promptly this time. Right before reaching the other end, a body of a man falls down on top of Kensuke from above. It happens in an instant. Kensuke's face pops up from the darkness. 
and he wakes up back in his usual seat on the subway. All of that must have just been a foreign dream. That was too weird. How would a child get on this train without an adult? He has no idea, but he can't really do anything but shake the thoughts out of his head for now, and he decides to finish his trip. The screen goes black again, and the night is over. He arrives back at the old station after work for the third time. He goes to the restroom for his daily break. As he's doing his business, a noise is heard. It's footsteps. Somebody else is in here. They're not moving quick, and they don't seem to be going into a stall. The other person just stops for a moment, and a door is heard creaking ajar. Hopefully they stop walking around. Kensuke opens his stall door and finds nobody outside. Leaving the restroom, there's nobody in the station either. It looks abandoned like always. Nothing but the sound of the overhead static. He continues to go smoke and watches the same light flicker like the other night. It turns from white to black and back and forth and then busts entirely, including the LED display underneath it as well. There's obviously very poor upkeep down here, but the timing of that was too convenient. The train stalls into view and he steps aboard. His usual passenger car friend isn't here though. The woman who always rides when he does is gone. He never did find out what was troubling her, so hopefully she'll be around tomorrow. In his normal seat tonight are three objects. They have a black sheet over them and they're taking up the whole bench almost. The sound of a baby whining is heard when he gets close to them, but there's nobody in sight, not here or on the cars in front of him. Kensuke decides to take another seat in the back instead. He dozes off and wakes up to the lights powering down. It's near pitch black with nothing but the amber glow of the lights outside and the passing tunnel to be able to make anything out. He looks at his watch to see it's 2am. There's something wrong here. Multiple nights in a row, something has happened out of the ordinary. His stop was missed more than once, so Kensuke decides to rush to the conductor car again, but it's locked. Is nobody manning the train controls, or are they sleeping on the job? Returning to his seat, a woman all in black is standing idle above those black objects. She speaks to him, saying she could help him with his predicament if he can tell her the sounds of the natural world, whatever that means. It's a puzzle, but when Kensuke walks around the train, there really are different sounds he hears in each of the separate cars. These were never here before, so where did they come from? He pays attention to the number of car and the sound he hears in each number. One of them is of cicadas, another of the ocean, and then again of a festival. They're seemingly just random noises at first glance, but when he returns and tells the woman clad in black what he heard, she tells him she has heard the voice of the natural world. If he talks to somebody called the Helper, he can leave the train tonight. The lights return to normal following this. Before Kensuke leaves her though, he asks what the objects on his seat are. She says that they are her children. Cats, in fact. Which is weird, because they don't look like they house anything, and he's sure he heard a human baby earlier. Doesn't matter though, he needs to get home for tonight. Up a few cars is an old man. He's wearing a cloth pleated shirt that you'd see at a golfing range and a small brown hat. The old man, on closer inspection, appears to be Kensuke's old teacher, Mr. Shimizu. He was a person who helped Kensuke out as a kid and was the reason he didn't drop out of school. Mr. Shimizu states Kensuke was always a troublemaker. He helps him out once again by saying ominously that Kensuke cannot be on board the train until the end. Mr. Shimizu states that he himself is going to the last stop, but Kensuke must get off before then. There will be three stops, and when he hears the sounds of the home station, he must get off. It's important he chooses the right stop, or else he'll be stuck here. He'll help him again later if he can do this. Kensuke regards Mr. Shimizu's seriousness, and he starts to pay attention to the buzzing of the train. The first stop's noise just sounds way too different. It's reminiscent of a spa. There's no way that's it. He decides to stay. The next stop is of a jaunty, solemn tune playing that sounds exactly like his home station. It has to be it. He's not completely sure, because it does sound slightly different, but it's too similar. He steps off nervously, but confidently. He made it. 
Thankfully, he has heard that noise one too many times on the way home from work to miss it. The night ends peacefully. Now on to the final night to the end of the game. Kensuke walks into the station, but this time he gets stopped by the ticketer before the gate. His card isn't working tonight, and there was no ticketer here the previous nights, so it's inconvenient he's here now, the only time his card decided to bug out. No matter what he has to say, the ticketer holds his position and won't let him by. Kensuke backtracks up the escalator and into a dirty open lobby area, with fluorescent lights barely keeping the musty entryway visible. He grabs a normal ticket from the machine near the street and returns. He passes through the gate and notices the ticketer has completely disappeared. The lights down here are more aggressively buzzing now. The restroom is locked as well. More bulbs above him start flickering maliciously. Kensuke walks swiftly towards the back near the smoking room. The quiet buzz starts ramping up into a loud, overbearing, static, shaking vibration. A screech of a woman is heard in the distance from the other corner of the station. It isn't safe here any longer. The disturbance comes to a climax as the train flies in besides Kensuke. He boards and hurries to his seat. Nobody is here this time, but it's actually nice for an ounce of peace. The bad feeling isn't gone just yet, though. He watches as the train passes his stop yet again. It's much less of a surprise now so he goes to see the conductor and is able to stride through a completely empty train. In fact, there's no one, even in the conductor's room. Nobody is here. When he turns around to leave the room, the door is locked. The sound of the rails intensifies and blood is seen exploding outside the front window, as if it hits someone. The train keeps going. The door finally unlocks and Kensuke finds the entire train coated in blood. Not only that, but the lights are now a crimson red, almost neon and blinding. His loafers squelch as he walks through the horrid mess. He must be going crazy or dreaming again. It's a vile sight. When he looks outside the car windows he passes through, he sees the silhouettes of the people he talked to prior from the last nights. They look large and shadowed. In each of the cars is an item that corresponds to them in some way upon a closer look. For instance, there is a red pinwheel for the child, a cane for the old man who helped him, etc. He pieces this together and brings each item to the correct corresponding car. This environment is just too unsettling and he must leave. A quiet banging is heard from the back. It sounds like somebody is knocking on the glass of a window from the outside. Nobody is here at the back door either. What was that? The outside city street is in view from the back of the train. When Kensuke turns around, he hears a wail. It was like before when the lights were turning off in the subway station. In the blink of an eye, a long-haired woman jumps out of the red ambiance and slashes him. The scream echoes as his eyes close. He wakes at a foggy, old-timey station. It's outside and appears surrounded with dark trees and shrubbery. If Kensuke was an office worker in the city, this is more like a countryside railway. It's marked Kisaragi Station on a sign nearby. There are wooden, broken down shelters to wait. The glass of the waiting area is worn and shattered in spots. It must be the dead of night now. The old man is on a bench here. The same Mr. Shimizu who helped him out before. He tells Kensuke to not worry and to call home. He'll know what it means when the time comes. He trusts Mr. Shimizu, even though he's befuddled with what's going on. Not asking any questions and putting his faith in him, he continues. With no other choice, Kensuke starts walking down the train tracks in hopes of finding a road. In the distance is a phone booth. He makes his way closer and realizes he only has enough change for one call. There are many numbers he could dial, from the police to his co-workers, but he decides to call home just like the old man told him. On the other end is his wife, Aiko. Kensuke always called this number, hoping somebody would answer, but it never happened. He asks her where she went, and that he's been looking for her ever since she disappeared. He starts sobbing. Aiko only responds by asking him where he is. Kisaragi Station, he claims. She pauses, and says, no, don't tell me. He's confused. She says she'll be there soon, and to not move. The phone call ends, and down the track, Kensuke sees things. Humans the silhouettes of them. 
They almost look like they're floating, but it's too dark to make out. He advances towards them, and once he reaches them, he looks to walk into them, inferring that he's joining them. The screen goes black. The game ends here. Okay, so that was clearly not the most direct ending. Chilla's art isn't known for having the easiest to follow stories, but there is an overarching narrative. To clear up and summarize what happened at the end is like this. Kensuke Tanaka married his wife Aiko, and she disappeared about two years ago. The reasons are unknown, but if you call the other numbers at the end, for instance, if you call a taxi, you reach Aiko's friend, who tells you something happened to her in middle school, then the line cuts. Calling the cops shows that Kensuke is a regular caller and they know him by name. More bad endings give more context. Apparently, the man with the cicadas on the train was somebody Kensuke bullied when he was a little kid. This alone gives enough reason to assume the other people on the subway had some connection to him, even in the smallest sense. The little girl is theorized to maybe have been a child that his wife could have given away in middle school. So the reason she thought Kensuke was her dad was because he actually was her dad. He just never knew. That detail is speculation, but the idea of the train relating to him is canon. The other important note is that Kensuke isn't dead throughout the game. He goes to work and then enters the other world as the lady clad in black calls it. His wife could or could not be, but to give my idea of something more concrete towards the phone call with her, goes as follows. Aiko either committed suicide and ended up in the limbo at the end of the game because of what she did in middle school. Or, maybe she was just on the haunted ghost train and didn't get help like Kensuke did, so she ended up there. Either way, Kensuke ended up getting aboard the same train and arrived here from the spirit who slashed and killed him. But he had help from the woman on the other side, and the man who was called the Helper. The Helper, who is Mr. Shimizu to him, told him he'd help him again later. The later referred to was at Kisaragi Station. When Mr. Shimizu told him to call home, that help probably meant he would meet his wife in the afterlife here and that was him walking into the silhouettes and joining her. A morbid but happy ending. Or it could mean that the call with his wife would give him the closure to keep living and he would get a second chance. His wife would come to him and it would be his ticket to escape. Either way, the helper was inferred to save him at the end, so it's most likely one or the other. But that's as straightforward as the end can be to be explained in my mind. It really is up to interpretation of the viewer, but there's not many loose ends. Just an ambiguous final scene. The ghost train itself, however, is a mystery. The spirits on board the train can be malicious or non-dangerous. I don't understand who the woman was who killed him myself, for instance. I assume it was part of the real Japanese myth or something. Also, whether it passengers people at random, or if it passengers people to the afterlife because of something like guilt, is unclear, though these things don't matter to this tale. This was Kensuke Tanaka's story, and his is finished. Thanks for watching all the way through if you did. I had a little mess up with the footage near the end, so the last scene is a bit scrambled. There are a lot more story explained videos like this on the channel, so feel free to check them out and tell me which ones you'd like to see next. There will definitely be more Chilla's art games like this covered soon. Subscribe and like and all that if you want to. Goodbye!